In section 5.5, we'll discuss how to tell Excel how to use built-in time-saving functions that can save us a lot of time when coding. Now, similar to how we use equals sum uh, in Excel or equals NPV, and that can quickly help us analyze data in Excel. When using Visual Basic for application, functions like message box or input box and others can help us analyze and present data much faster. And it's so much fun as well. Let me click here on this pre-built function so we can look at the bigger picture of what we're talking about here in 5.5. Oh, here we go. Okay, it, with these pre-built functions, it's like if you own a sandwich store and you figure out how to sell pre-built subs quickly by only feeding in one or two parameters like tomatoes or cucumbers. Now, in section 5.5, we will also discuss how to handle errors when dealing with bugs in our code. And we'll come back to bugs very soon. Now, let's talk about Excel and BBA functions to use in our code. Now, before discussing BBA functions like message box, I want to discuss how easy it is to use Excel's pre-built functions like sum in our VBA code. All you do is this, this is really powerful. So I'm gonna go here and let me create a new sub. I'll call it sub sample. I'll just re replay, or I'll just cut and paste on top of this one here. Okay, and sub, there we go. All right, so all you do is this, this is really powerful. You type in this worksheet function, Okay, then dot, and this is unbelievable. Then you can select any Excel function. And this is what makes VBA so powerful and easy to use. It's not just about VBA. It's about using what Excel already does for you. So let's make a procedure together that uses the sum function. So we type here worksheet function dot sum. And then in brackets, I'm going to put just one plus one. We'll keep it simple and we'll build on this. And then before this, I'm going to add message box like this. Okay, great. And let's run this code. Obviously, we know the answer is going to be two. There we go, two. That was easy, eh? What if we want to reference cells instead of just numbers in brackets here? Well, we can enter numbers in two cells and then reference them in our code. So we'll enter two in one cell and one in another cell. And let me go right to, yeah, we'll do it right here, that's fine. All right, two and then one, okay. And this here is cell reference H1503, which I'll copy and come back to in a sec. Okay, so let's go back to Visual Basic. We know that in Visual Basic, we can type range to access a cell's contents. So let's do that. First, we have to remember that cell reference, which I already copied, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna update our code as follows. So in brackets, I'm gonna get rid of this. I'm gonna type range, open parenthesis, okay? And remember, we always have to use double quotes here, okay? And then what we can do, is we do comma and then we do range and it's going to be the number beside that in brackets okay so i think that was uh i h and i let me go back and just double check h good and i 1503 okay now let's go back <clears throat> pardon me let's go back here now uh and what we're going to do is we're going to run the code Great, so it worked for, for these, excellent. And you can even do it if you um, if you typed a third variable in, okay? And this is a little bit tricky what, what I'm gonna show you, okay? Um, but what you can do is you can add a third variable here and it's smart enough to know to add everything in the middle, okay? So I'll do that in a sec. But first what I wanna do is I wanna make this easier for us uh, to reference, okay? because it's so hard for me to remember that cell there and that cell there. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to name a reference here, okay? So cell one, and there's a reason we're doing it this way, named ref, okay, good. And I'll do this one here, 
cell two named ref. Okay, good. And if we go back to Visual Basic, then what we can do is you put this in here, and we're going to build on this, okay? And then we're going to put this in here as well, cell two named ref. Okay. And let's run it, and we'll get the same results, which is three. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to define names, meaning variables, in Excel. So what I'll do now is I'm going to create variables at the top here. So I'm going to call this dim, okay, cell one, okay, as long, good. And I'll do dim cell two as long as well. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign those variables. Okay. So what I'll do is this. I'll write here cell one equals. Okay. And I can do, whoops. Well, it's waiting for me to get, that's why. Equals this. Okay. Good. And then cell two is going to equal this cell two named reference. Okay. Then what I can do is I can actually put that in brackets as well and add it up together. So here's what you do. So I'm going to go here in brackets and I'm going to replace this with cell one. Okay comma, cell two. Notice I didn't put it in quotes. We don't need to because we define the variables here. So let me run this now. Three. It works. Pretty cool, huh? It's amazing. So play around with this because you can always type here worksheet function. Worksheet function. And then you can hit dot and then choose any single uh, 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 Excel formula you want to here. One more thing I want to show you before moving on is if we go into Excel here and we create a third variable here, okay, and I'll call this one cell three named reference right here, cell three named reference, Excel can actually add up all three variables together, even though we don't reference them all. So let me enter in three here. And we know that two plus one plus three is six. So if we go here to Visual Basic, what we can do is we can actually change this so that it adds up all three of those cells. And the way you do that is you go here in brackets. So it's like this here, okay? And we go sum that in that in brackets. So I'm gonna hit play here and it's six. It's pretty cool, huh? It's amazing. Yeah. All right, let's move on now. So what I want to show you now is functions in Visual Basic, um, like message box. Okay. So similar to how you can type in here, worksheet function dot, and then get just a ton of these, uh, these Excel functions. We can do the same thing for Visual Basic as well. The Visual Basic has a bunch of formulas. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to type, and remember big to small, VBA, which is big, dot, and we can access all of VBA's functions here too, like message box, MSG, BOX, right? So there's tons of them. So if I do this, I can do VBA dot message box, and then I guess I can put in some text here. Okay, let's run this. Okay, text, great. Um, now, you can do that for any function that VBA has as well. It's really, really powerful. So big to smaller works also when you're looking at VBA Excel and its functions. Okay. And we know that typing VBA here is optional. We don't have to, and it will still work. Okay. So what you can also do is, let's say that I want to do the VBA function for beep. I want the I want Excel to make a beeping noise. I don't know how to do that. I go here and I scroll down. Oh, beep. And so I click this useless code here and it beeps. Okay, great. Um, what if I wanted to make text uppercase? 
then what I can do is I can go VBA dot U, UK, so here we go. And then what I can do is in brackets, I can type hello, all lowercase, message box. Okay, so let's run this. There we go, it made it all caps, hello. We could have used that earlier, but we didn't. Okay, now we aren't using these variables uh, in our code here, but for fun, let me create a new variable called Chris lowercase, and I'll define it as a text message string. So I'll type dim Chris lowercase as string. Okay, so let's, let's do this here, so it'll make sense in a sec. Dim Chris lowercase, like that as string, okay? Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type here, Chris underscore, if it remembers it, I remember uh, control uh, a space, equals Chris, okay? All in lowercase here, okay? Whoops, make the first letter lowercase too with a quote at the beginning. Okay, good, great. Then in brackets after uppercase here, I'm gonna enter in Chris lowercase. Okay, great. Notice I didn't have to use quotes there because I'm referencing a variable. Now let's run this code right here to see what happens. It's Chris in uppercase. Okay. And in our if then code earlier, we could have used vba.ucase, this function here, to make the yes and no uppercase as well. Now, if you play around uh, with VBA functions like this, meaning if you type VBA and then a period, and then you select whatever function. Please be careful and make backups of your Excel file too because it can be dangerous, which is why Excel warns you before opening macros. Now, I recommend typing VBA and then dot, and then just familiarize with yourself with everything you can do here, right? So let's go VBA dot, and just scroll down and look through all of these. It's pretty powerful. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight this stuff here and I'm gonna comment it out, okay? So Excel's not gonna read it. I'm gonna move on to something new here. I could have deleted it too, but I wanna show you another way to comment something and uncomment something, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna type box, okay? Which is one of my favorite functions. And we'll see here that it tells us what to enter next. So let's type the following. Enter a number. And then what I'll do, what I'll do next is it says, hey, put a comma if you want the title. So I'll do comma and I'll type the title. Title goes here. Okay, let's, let's run this. Enter a number, title goes here, which I spelled wrong, sorry. Okay, cancel, cool. All right, we can even assign a variable to whatever the user enters in the input box by defining a variable, okay? So let's let's do that. Let's define a variable, and I'll get rid of this crap here. I'll go dim their response, okay? As string, because it's gonna be text-based, okay? Um, and then um, what we'll do next is I'll put right here their response, Their response equals, and looks like I just deleted a uh, VBA here, okay? And you don't need the VBA here, but I'm gonna leave it there anyway, okay? And then you can you can, you can can click run, and there's gonna be an error, watch this. Oh, what just happened there? Looks like we got an error. Let's now try it with brackets, okay? See if this fixes the error. Whoops, well, it's not letting me finish, let me finish, okay? And now I'll run this, enter a number, and there's no error. Okay. All right, now on the next line down here, let's enter in another VBA formula. Okay, we're gonna type VBA dot message box, whoops, MS box, let me go back here so it picks up again. VBA dot message box, here we go. Okay, and by now you probably know that typing a VBA first is, is optional. Then after the message box, we can type their response, okay? Their response, there we go. And let's run the code. Enter a number, 55. 
That's their response. It's pretty cool, huh? All right, let's add more detail to this message box by typing their response, comma, VB critical. Okay, that's the, the, the stop sign or hey, be careful icon. And then we'll do a comma title here. Okay, and let's, let's run this code. Enter a number, 59. There we go. Okay, so title here. It's got the uh, critical stop sign there uh, is, as well. Okay, now if we wanted to put in parameters after the message box in any order we wanted to, we can do that as well, okay? And the way you do that is you type, type I'll show you here. Whatever the parameter is, you type colon and equals. Let me show you. Okay, so let me, let me, let me just comment this out for now, okay? So it's not gonna read that. Okay, good. So right here, what I'm gonna do, and I don't have to do it in order, because before it asked me to put prompt first. I'm like, no, leave me alone. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna write here title, we're gonna do title first, okay? Title equals, and then we'll write new title here. Spell it correctly, teacher, please. Okay, good. And then what I can do is I can then put second the prompt if I wanted to by going here, prompt, e colon equals, okay? And then put here their response. Okay. And let's run this now. Enter a number, 54. 54, there you go. I did not put the VB critical uh, icon there. But the reason I want to show that to you is you can do you can actually enter in the parameters out of order if you want to. And we're going to discuss many more functions and advanced features of VBA in the case study in section 5.6.